cross. <laughs> all right, good afternoon all. Uh, before uh, we throw to questions, just a quick update on an incident uh, that we've been managing throughout the day. Uh, so at the Holiday Inn Flinders Lane, uh, we've had a, uh, what, we, what seems to be the fire system has had either a leak or a burst pipe, which has leaked into a, uh, an unoccupied room. So no residents uh, were in that room, uh, which has then moved uh, into the staffing areas of the Holiday Inn. So we are in the process of uh, moving some residents to higher levels of that hotel and looking at all the contingency arrangements for that hotel. Uh, we will have uh, engineers in there uh, and the um, uh, cleaners who can mop up uh, the, the, the water leakage uh, and that will play out for the rest of the afternoon and into tomorrow. Happy to throw two questions. Yeah, can I just start by saying that, you know, it is um, awful how this is playing out in the media and for that family. Um, myself and my organisation would never uh, want anyone's public information or private information, sorry, uh, and their health records or health information disclosed and played out. What's happening to this family is awful uh, and is, is not okay. We need to be kind and respect uh, both them in this really difficult time uh, and my focus needs to be on the care and um, uh, well-being of this family. We have put out, uh, you know, as soon as we found out about this, we have put out um, uh, our findings uh, and we stick to those. But please, can we be a little kind and respectful to this family who have endured so much? It's interesting you say that because he says he feels like he's been made out to be a criminal by the government. So you're standing by your story that he didn't report it. He's saying that he did and that he's given Like I said, no, he's not lying. Uh, we're not making those accusations, uh, and you know we would never asperse that to, to any individual. Um, we have, you know, what what our audit uh, shows and our review shows, um, uh, and and that's that's our, our version of events. Uh, but again, um, he's done nothing wrong. Uh, he brought in uh, his nebulizer, which he um, has been using, uh, and you know I think it's really important to note that you know what we've done since this is really look at, well, was it clear enough for, for residents and what could we have done uh, to uh, prevent this happening again? Uh, and that's my responsibility to make sure that it is clear. Uh, and if it isn't, uh, I've fixed that now by really looking at strengthening through the airport where we're scanning for these devices um, at the airport. And that's been a really successful move. Uh, but also we're doing, um, uh, we've got a bunch of uh, pictures at the airport now so that it is made really clear and that we're asking people on their return traveller form uh, if they do have these devices so we can really get ahead of it and make sure when people land uh, that they've provided the best care possible. I suppose we're not saying that he's done something wrong in doing this work. We're asking whether there was a failure by your department if, if he actually put forward the fact that he had this device and it wasn't picked up by the experts who were speaking to him. Mm. Can you categorically say that, that he didn't raise the fact that he had a nebulizer with him? I can categorically say that there is no evidence from our audits that he has raised this with our uh, health team or our operational team. But again, um, this argument of he said, she said, that's, uh, that's been our um, report. Uh, again, no one is gonna win from this argument where we're constantly having uh, a battle on these matters which are so private for somebody. These devices are in their bags. Uh, we don't check bags. We never have, and we don't have any legal right to. He claims he was given permission to use it. Well, again, that's not our recollection, and that's not our, um, uh, uh, from what we've heard, uh, and the stories that, uh, sorry, the information that we had from our health providers, there is no evidence for that. Your staff uh, ask the people coming into hotel quarantine if they have these nebulizers on entry? So it's done at the health check. So when someone arrives into the hotel, within that first tw uh, 12 hours, there's a health screen in um, which uh, the um, health service, which if you keep in mind that this is a primary health service in quarantine hotels, would ask those questions about um, you know, their, their medical history, are they on any medication, are there any other devices that they may use, and that's where we pick these things up in the past.
So all bags are scanned through Melbourne Airport. So if there were um, weapons, uh, you would uh, that Melbourne Airport um, bag checking uh, would certainly uh, be picking that up. Uh, earlier this week, I can come back to you on the exact date, uh, but within the first um, 24 hours, uh, you know, it proved really fruitful. We've got a nurse uh, on site there with uh, Border Force at the bag checking, uh, and uh, again, even with the pictures, a return traveller uh, didn't uh, realise that it was a nebulizer. Um, No, not at all. Uh, this is my organisation and, the, and uh, our responsibility and I'm more than happy to answer these questions. Do you have thrown under the bus? I don't feel like I'm being thrown under the bus, no. Sorry, I... No, my understanding is that um, uh, they are a uh, they live together. There's two people that they live together. No, but the cleaner from the Holiday Inn uh, did not do the airport, as I understand. Emma, this is just such a critical issue. It's the Well, like I said, um, we have done our audits and reviews and we have the information uh, and I spoke to the CEO of you know, Healthcare Australia, our health provider, uh, and who personally oversaw this. Um, uh, I can't explain the difference of information. What I can do is say that you know, I don't agree with you know, people talking about this poor individual and their family circumstances in this way. It is awful for them uh, and um, you know, this was not anyone's fault. No one did this deliberately, no one did this maliciously. Uh, this was a, an incident that no one knew about until after it had occurred. Had we have known about it, we would have done something earlier. The first time that we knew about this was the notification from the Alfred uh, and we started to take the, all the necessary steps and seek advice from public health at that point. Now, my understanding is that uh, it was on the day that he arrived uh, through the similar process where he had his health screen and health assessment that he did disclose that. Does it seem interesting to you that he disclosed it once he got to the health hotel, but he apparently wouldn't disclose it when he got to the initial hotel, knowing what the piece of equipment was and how mm. important it was to him? I think keep in context the differences in the services. So, hotel quarantine is a primary health service. Uh, that is, is like uh, you and I would go to a GP in the community. So the screens are very different. At the health hotel you would get a more detailed health assessment and you'd have access to, to the range of specialists because they are the secondary and tertiary health providers. So I'm not surprised by that, no. Uh, the Premier today said that you couldn't make this press conference because he had a busy schedule. Is that true? Uh, this morning I've been uh, managing the uh, holiday in Flinders Lane uh, with uh, the Alfred Health team. Uh, operations are my priority and to make sure that these incidents are well managed, so that's. Uh, I think that uh, Victoria would expect me to ensure that uh, uh, operations are running safe uh, and and being well managed, and especially given uh, this is our highest risk environment. Um, it needed my attention. I'm here now, and I'm happy to answer your questions. Do you really think Victorians are going to accept this? Like they're right now in lockdown for at least five days, and we don't have any clearance as to what actually happened. Mm -hmm. Uh, like I said, this is a really regrettable incident. Had we have known uh, about this, uh, we would have taken uh, steps earlier. Uh, now that we have, uh, and you know, my role is now focusing purely on ensuring that the, the strategies and the, the steps that we've put in place are well embedded and implemented and we don't have this happening again. Emma, on Wednesday you said that this person probably didn't know that they were doing the wrong thing. Yeah. What made you say that? Why were you so confident that that was that person's situation? Because people coming back uh, to Australia and to Victoria uh, are returning citizens. They're residents in the community. They're not doing the wrong thing. Uh, and our experience over the last uh, six months with this program is, you know, 99% of people do the right thing. Uh, and, you know, whilst it is that, you know, quarantine is a really tough 
um, uh, program, uh, they do the right thing. They want to uh, ensure that you know the Victorian community is safe. So I'm not at all surprised. I've, I've answered your question uh, to the best of my ability. So it's not possible that, that there was a floor in hotel quarantine and this is maybe you know, your fault and the government's fault? The, the records that we keep for these assessments uh, are thorough and detailed. Uh, and again, these are the requirements of all health providers. Sorry, I can't hear you. Um, well, I, I'm really pleased to say that he is doing well uh, and you know, I wish him and his family all the very best. Emma, are you prepared to make the records public? Which records, sorry? The health records. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure that we can, uh, but I can absolutely, well, because it's a health record. Uh, there are privacy restrictions to that, but I'm happy to seek the advice and see what can be released or not. So if it helps, I'm happy to talk through the process, which will help, uh, I think, answer your question. So when you come into a hotel and, and the CCTV uh, from Holiday Inn uh, shows this clearly, which is um, you come in, you get your um, uh, um, room number from the hotel, you then move to the authorised officer who checks your ID, updates your detention notice and you move through. So that interaction between those two um, uh, um, contact points uh, uh, is under three minutes. So it's really quick. Uh, and uh, uh, the authorised officers who are, um, are having the engagement uh, would always say if there is, uh, if, if a resident raises a concern, raises an issue, please sir, ma'am, can you get to your room and we'll call you in the room. Again, our, our program is embedded in an IPC framework, which means that we have to move people through that process as quickly and as safely as possible. Uh, because one, uh, we don't want to have those conversations, they can all be done on the phone. Uh, but two, uh, often we're bumping in uh, you know, 15, 20, 30 other residents and we have to keep that process moving. Once uh, that process has been done, straight to the elevator, elevated to the floor, a resident support officer uh, greets you, shows you to the door and shuts the door. The only other time staff have face-to-face -face contact is um, uh, through swabbing, so that they are uh, three and 11 testing uh, and the rest is all done via the phone. If there are, so all these processes around complaints management, they're all logged and recorded. Uh, and we do that to make sure people are kept safe and that we are held accountable. Right, so do you have specific evidence that your staff had this conversation about whether you have a nebulizer or asking specifically do you have a nebulizer? So the health team and the uh, 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 so the health team and their first screen in the first 12 hours check uh, for uh, both you know health conditions, medication and devices that they are currently using. There is no record of that on the system. Right, so there's no record that... Of a nebulizer in the system. I can't disclose uh, uh, other things because that would be a breach of his, his privacy. It seems that this is such a critical issue. We're now in lockdown. Why can't we release those records? Because I don't have the powers to do that and I don't think it's the right thing. Uh, we can check and see what can be released. Uh, but again, this is someone's personal information. They don't ask, do you have a nebulizer? They ask around medical devices or any other um, aids you know, that they may have, uh, and there was no disclosure. You don't have to identify why can't you release parts of the record I think I've answered your question. I'd have to come back to you on that. Yeah, I'm happy to come back to you on that one. So we have our own uh, IPC uh, steering committee, uh, which has a panel of both internal and external experts, has a direct link back to public health, uh, and the CHO is um, uh, the ultimate decision maker of that, um, which you know has, has stood us very well, and, um, and we really uh, value our panel's contribution. Um, but we also have the advice through from the CHO and deputy CHOs on AHPPC, on, on you know, hotel quarantine related matters. Uh, if there's other forums, uh, I'm not opposed, you know, the, the more, uh, input from um, uh, experts, the better, uh, and we will always take advice and consider that. Is there a, is there a breakdown in the kind of communications between that body and your own? 
No, not to my knowledge, no. Will you, sorry, will you release the record if this man wants it to clear his name? I think that's a matter I'll need to come back to you on. Yeah, absolutely. So if someone is symptomatic in between testing regimes, uh, then yes, they are yeah, generally tested. Uh, and that, that would be the medical uh, staff decision on the ground. Not to my knowledge. So staff meals are provided at the hotel um, uh, for staff. Again, this is an IPC issue, so we don't want staff bringing uh, their meals and doing all the meal prep uh, in, in these environments. That's why we uh, provide everything to them on site so they don't need to do that. I'm happy to, to check that. I'm not aware of it. Do you think you should apologise to this person? Oh, I'm, I'm deeply sorry for his treatment. Um, no one ever uh, wanted this to happen and you know, I'm sorry that, the, um, that this has been played out the way it has. It is awful. We have never uh, accused him uh, of doing the wrong thing. He hasn't done the wrong thing. Um, he had no, uh, he, I suspect, um, he had no uh, well, understanding. Why do you say I suspect? Like, surely you know exactly Well, I haven't spoken to him. I haven't spoken to him. I've offered to speak to him and I'm happy to speak well, to I him. You shouldn't be hearing I suspect. You should know exactly what happened by now. We know from our, um, uh, from the audits and the investigations that we've done, that's, that's, our, that's our knowledge. So what are you sorry for? I'm sorry the way he's been treated and I would really encourage media outlets uh, to, to be respectful, to be kind. Uh, we need, you know, to be um, cognizant of the fact that this person uh, has endured, you know, a really rough illness and is trying to recover and we want to support him as best we can. But he's not just upset with the media, he's upset with the government for the way his case has been described. He, mm. he says that what, what you're saying is not true. Mm. Well, I'm, I'm more than happy uh, to do whatever we need to do to make him uh, comfortable, uh, but again, we are operating on the information that we have, which the audits show. We haven't heard that information. Just um, in reflection on the way that this has played out, um, with what you said and what uh, Daniel Andrews has said, would you go about that messaging a little bit differently if this occurred again, about what you said about him and the way you spoke about him in the media? So we haven't spoken, so CQB and myself yeah. have not spoken about him in the media. Um, again, we don't talk about residents' specific details uh, for, for this very reason, uh, and it's to protect their privacy and their, their well-being. Emma, it was you and the Premier that brought the media and all the Koreans raised the issue with us. That's why we're talking about it. We raised, so I raised that there was a family, I didn't go into specifics, and I raised the nebulizer, absolutely. Uh, and that was to communicate the extent of the issue, which is, um, as we were unpacking and as we were getting more information around um, uh, you know, this incident, uh, how, how we were linking things in and what the genomics were saying, absolutely. It was, it was you and the Premier that put him out there in the first place. No, I talked about the case. I didn't talk about any specifics. When I talked about specifics and names, yeah. we're not identifying him, mm -hmm. but it's, this is the reason we're all talking about it. It's because on Wednesday, this was your explanation as to how the outbreak went from the hotel quarantine. And I think we need to be really careful and make sure that the, um, the incident of, of this is managed carefully and that we are being really respectful of this person and, and their family and the horrible experiences they had to endure. Changing, changing tax slightly, uh, we've got photos of uh, workers at Holiday Inn during the evacuation period. They were wearing full PPE except not wearing gloves and carrying rubbish out the front. Is there any situation where that would be appropriate considering what has occurred in that hotel? So um, I think the Cho answered this one yesterday. So we don't have uh, gloves as part of our um, uh, PPE. Uh, unless there are uh, specific instances like a uh, blood spill um, uh, for IPC reasons. So um, the evidence uh, and the advice that we have is that um, no gloves but sanitise. Hand hygiene is the most important thing. Thank you, folks. Thank you, Thank you guys. Have a good day.